My name is Jay Grams. My family has owned the Volo Auto Museum since 1960. We have a few hundred of the most exciting collector cars and they're all for sale in one location. I personally have handpicked them from around the country. Welcome to my sales shop. Come on, let's go for a spin. There's a very good chance I have the highest option 1970 Challenger RT convertible in the world sitting right here. This thing is loaded. It has so many options. It actually uses, uses two fender tags. So what we got is a numbers match 383 Magnum factory Hemi orange car. And some of the options include air, power steering, power disc brakes, cruise control, rally gauges, power windows, power top, sport mirrors. It's got a tough grip wheel. The list goes on and on. Go to volocars.com. That's where you can read all the specs, study all the pictures. And that's where you find the prices on all of the collector cars that we offer for sale. That's at volocars.com. If you enjoy watching the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on that bell icon, that way you're notified as the new ones are posted. But for right now, tops down, let's go for a spin. That good looking car, they made 963 RT convertibles total that year. That's all they made with every engine, every combination, and a 70 RT Challenger convertible. And uh, that's why I say this one might be the highest optioned one in the world because it's loaded. It's even got leather seats and SE uh, trim. Uh, underneath the car appears to be really solid. The floors, frame rails, all that looks really good and solid. Uh, it has factory undercoat underneath there. The front end looks new. Not just the bushings, but the control arms, the steering linkages, uh, the ball joints, the cotter pins. All of the front end steering and suspension looks brand new. Uh, shocks have been replaced. The rear suspension's been redone. You pretty much, you got leaf springs, bushings, and shocks, but they look new as well. Also has a sway bar back there. The exhaust system looks brand new. I think this one has a little crossover pipe, Dynamax mufflers, and it has the correct square tips coming out through the rear valance. Um, 727 automatic transmission. Uh, you look up at the motor, it's spotless. The starter looks fresh. <clears throat> and the fuel system's replaced. The tank, sending unit, uh, that all looks new as well. The body on this car is really exceptional. Probably the nicest restored part of the car is the body and paint. It's absolutely smooth. I just uh, wiped it down with a microfiber towel, and that's when you find things, is when you're looking at every inch of it, even along the bottoms. Uh, I even felt there's not a bubble. It's slick down here at the very bottom. It's slick as it is on top. I'm noticing, look at the gap. Look how it's flush. Everything lines up really nice. Car is straight. You can look down the sides. You can look across the hood, look across the trunk. It is straight. A problem area is right down here because there's a seam right there. It's smooth. Another problem area on all convertibles is right here because there's a seam. It's all smooth. This all fits nice and square, flush. So the body is, is really outstanding in my opinion. It's a factory Hemi orange car. The paint is polished out like glass. I did not see any problem areas. No shrinking, cracking. Um, I, I didn't see any problem area at all. As a matter of fact, I didn't see a flaw. Not saying I didn't miss one, uh, but it's slick. Uh, this is called the transverse stripe, uh, the stripe going down the side. And then it has the, they call it the power bulge hood with the stripe. It's got new hood pins. It's got dual chrome racing mirrors. The chrome is really nice, but not new. It's got a little bit of wear and patina. Windshield's new and the moldings around it look like they've been polished. And it has the optional special edition trim. And that's either brand new or it's been professionally restored. Emblem looks new. Optional bumper guards. Uh, the bumper's in really nice shape. We'll call it a seven out of 10. It's straight, it's shiny, but I can't say it's new. It has a little bit of patina. The grill also the same way, no damage to the grill, but it's not new. Correct antenna is shiny. 
Door jams are painted really nice. Weather strips, sill plates are new. So the front seats are re-cushioned and reupholstered in glove soft leather. So the upholstery fits really nice. Now the back seats came in vinyl. That's the way it would have been, and it's reupholstered as well. The door panels are new. The rear side panels are original in good shape. A little bit of the black dye is peeling off a little bit. That could use a little touch-up. Uh, the pop-up gas cap's really nice. Tail light uh, is really good. The rear bumper has probably been re-chromed. It looks a little nicer than the front. It's a black convertible top in excellent shape. The correct Mopar grain material. I looked back here, the power uh, pump doesn't look that old. It's been replaced at some point. I'm assuming the trunk floor is new. I'm only assuming that because it's pristine. I lifted the mat and it's painted gloss orange. Now the quarter panels, I cannot find any cuts or splices. Best I can tell, they're the original quarter panels on the car. It has that factory uh, like undercoat on the inside. This also has the complete jack assembly, the collapsible tire with the air bottle, and then the mat, weather strip, and, and sticker were all replaced. It's all painted in detail. The latches, the tail light housings, the nuts and bolts, really nice trunk compartment. Another option it has is an inside hood release. Normally they opened out here in 1970. So it's a VIN number matching 383 Magnum. It looks to be all stock, the manifolds, valve covers, air cleaner. Uh, it's all nice and clean. The motor's painted fresh, air cleaner's restored. Uh, factory air, power steering, power brakes, cruise control. Has a Mopar radiator. Uh, the clamps are the reproduction clamps. Correct shroud, new alternator, uh, overflow bottle. It's got both horns, the battery's bolted down properly, it has new battery cables, very proper under the hood. Carpets are excellent. The center console's really good original. There's a small crack here or there. The dash pad, I'm assuming, has been restored because they always split, and that's in excellent shape. The rally gauges, the clock has quartz movement. Uh, the wood grain's a little bit worn. The original AM 8-track radio is kind of dirty, and it didn't work for me. Someone might have just stuck that back in there. Uh, you know, maybe having that restored would be a nice improvement. Also has the tough grip wheel, not brand new, but in good shape. I did just drive this car. I drove down the road really well, steered and uh, stopped and performed and handled really well. Um, I did not try the cruise control, to be honest with you. So the interior is really nice, not perfect, but really nice. Noticing that the front door jams are all painted slick as well. Now it has the two fender tags here. They certainly appear to be the originals. There's a VIN number stamped up here on the core support and on the cowl. They all match the car. The engine bay must have been completely gutted and painted beautifully. It's all nice orange. All the components on the firewall are really nice. The interior lights working in back. I can see them down low. Actually, I never even knew they had lights down here. The back of this seat has three little holes drilled in a circle. Something must have been mounted in the back of the seat at one time. So there's little things like that. When I say the interior is not perfect, it's very nice, but you'll find a little crack in the piece of plastic or a uh, you know, little dye peeling on this black panel. So uh, it's really nice the way it is. You can spend a little time and bring it up uh, to the next notch. Oh, these seats feel good. Glove, glove box liner is new. Got power windows. Gauges light up. The tachometer is moving, but doesn't seem real accurate. Uh, but I know the gas gauge, temperature, uh, oil pressure, all that's working. Quartz movement in the clock. The fastened seat belt light works. 
there's a map light, there's a lever under the dash, you turn that and the map light comes on, horn works. Rally wheels are in really good shape, they're not new wheels but they're good, the trim rings look like they're new. Door handles look real nice. I did just decode the trim tag as well, so that will be posted on our site. Yeah, sounds nice. So there you have it. This is a rare, rare car. It's a really nice car. It's not a perfect car, uh, but it's certainly uh, outstanding the way it is. If you're a serious collector and want to throw a little more money at it and bring it to the next level, this is that type of car uh, to do it to because your investment will always be there. Desirable and rare, the winning combination. That's my impression of this Challenger RT. You can go to volocars.com. There's plenty of ways to reach out to our salesmen. If you have questions or concerns, feel free to discuss it with them. They'll help you the best they can. They can help get this delivered anywhere in the world. They can also help you with financing. It's all at volocars.com. If you enjoy watching the videos, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that bell icon so that you'll see the videos as they're posted. Thanks for watching.